It also matters to the future of New Jersey. It matters to whether you're going to have jobs or not when you graduate. The second major factor impacting property taxes in New Jersey is school funding. Here's a curious consistency. Guess who defines New Jersey school funding? Any hints? The Supreme Court, right, absolutely. That's the infamous Robinson versus Cahill followed by Abbott versus Burke. I think we're on Abbott versus Burke 28. Uh, there are more versions of the Abbott versus Burke decision than there are Rocky movies. But the same problem applies. Uh, you know, I, I'm often reminded, when I was a kid I lived in Princeton. I grew up in Princeton and our patron saint was Albert Einstein. And one of Einstein's more famous comments is he said, it's a sure sign of insanity when you do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Well, our Supreme Court has been doing the same thing over and over again for 35 years. What do you think of their sanity? Okay, Mark, what are you going to do about it? Well, I'll tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to promise to put through a constitutional amendment to get rid of Abbott or to get rid of Coa, because it's not going to happen. Thank God, I don't have to do that. The next governor of New Jersey, and by the way, the position of governor of New Jersey, I'm going to suggest we change the title from governor of New Jersey to Doge. Back in the old days, it was kind of cool. Venice used to elect their duke. The Doge of Venice was elected and essentially, once elected, had all the powers of a king. Think king or Doge. In fact, we, we used to tease uh, Joe Doria, who's now the commissioner of, uh, I think it's community services, and uh, he was both a state senator and a mayor of Bayonne, and we used to refer to him as the Doge of Bayonne because he had so much power. But anyway, what am I going to do? Well, the next governor of New Jersey will have the opportunity to appoint four, and by the way, you got to know, the majority is, I mean, the total court is seven members of the Supreme Court. So four out of seven come up for appointment in the next four years. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there is no more important fact that you need to know. Their names are Justices Wallace, Rivera Soto, Long, and Holmes. And they all have a four-year lease on life. And I intend to retire all of them. Who will I replace them with? And by the way, if it's not me, I hope to God that whoever gets the job does it. I intend to replace them with people who've actually read the state constitution. There is a provision in the state constitution that says no branch of government shall exercise the powers properly belonging to another branch. No branch of government shall exercise the powers properly belonging to another branch. And that means that the judiciary does not have the power of the executive branch or of the legislative branch. The dates, by the way, I could actually cite you the specific dates. It's uh, one is in 2010, one 2011, one 2012, and one 2013. Within four years, we can convert the majority of the Supreme Court. I will still respect the tradition that says that a court should be bipartisan in other words, no more than, I think it's three members or whatever, come from a particular party. And that was intended to make sure we had a non-political court. But in fact, our court has broken down and has become a highly political court. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that because I want to revisit the COA issue. And I want to see the Mount Laurel decision and the Abbott decision overturned by the court itself. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you cut the Gordian knot. Change the court, and you change New Jersey. It's the shortest distance from point A to point B is a new court. Totally constitutional, totally proper. And actually, we're talking about a very conservative, and I use that with a small c, revolution here. We're talking about turning our system back to a system where housing issues will be decided by the legislature. What a concept. Elected officials don't like their decisions, fire them. Don't like the governor's decision, 
fire him. That's the way to do it. It's the most important decision that the governor of New Jersey will get to make next year. Okay, so coal goes away. What do you replace it with? I do not favor, by the way, one of the guys is running around, he's a good friend of mine, actually he lives in my town, and he's saying, well, I want to gut COA. Well, let me tell you something. The term gut, it's kind of like, how do you define is? It can mean different things to different people. If you're talking about gutting a mackerel, okay, I accept the concept. The mackerel is undeniably dead. On the other hand, you can also talk about gutting a house where you leave the foundation and the walls and the roof and you merely rebuild it inside. That's not good enough. The fundamental flaw with COA is COA represents Soviet-style central planning. Now, you know, it was interesting. In the introduction, he was kind enough to mention the fact that I've run through 500 towns. And by the way, I will run through all 566 because I like that ground-level view of New Jersey. I like it when, that when people talk to me about Winfield Park, I know where it is. And I actually know something about the community. It's quite amazing. And Winfield Park, for example, just outside of Linden, actually consists of military barrack style houses that were built around the time of the Second World War to house war workers at the Linden plants. And it's still there, and that's still the fundamental character of the community. Obviously, the places have been improved, but you have to know that. If you want to be governor of New Jersey, you've got to know about this state. Most of our friends, honestly, haven't even driven through the state, much less run through the state. But back to COA. Fundamental problem with COA, as I said, is its central planning. As you go around the state, and you see the different parts of the state, and the different people, and the different geography, you realize how diverse and complex a state this really is. It's incredible. There is no way you can make a single rule in Trenton that applies to everybody. One size does not fit all, and, and just like one size fits all gloves, it almost never is a perfect fit, no matter where you do it. The policy is dead wrong, and it's been dead wrong for decades and the Supreme Court doesn't get it. Why doesn't the Supreme Court get it? Because it's seven judges, unelected, and the way our system works, by the way, they get a seven-year term, and if they are reconfirmed, which they routinely are automatically, they're on for life to age 70, which is when they have to retire, thank God. <laughs>